Um, the second in the series of the micro drainage presentations that we'll be providing as webinars is on the optimum design of sustainable drainage systems. I'm going to take this in a little bit of a staged approach today and with the agenda running along these lines. The idea is that we can start off right at source control. The, the intention is to capture that rainfall at source and ideally deal with, deal with it at source. So I've had requests in asking um, how to design soakaways for properties and things like that. So I'm going to go in a step-by-step -step approach and initially start off by redesigning an, infrastru an infiltration structure that could be a, a soakaway um, featuring on, on a property, in this case for, for a large area as it happens, that's already flooding. So that, that'll be the first thing that we'll fix and redesign that very quickly. Um, the next step is to produce a treatment train, a sustainable drainage treatment train, because I'm trying to ensure that everyone is mindful about the multiple benefits that we can provide with sustainable drainage systems. It's not just all about the water quantity. We're also looking at the quality of the water, and we're looking at providing amenities if we, if we have the space. So what I'll do in the next step is to put together a small suds train. Let's look at the benefits that we can gain through pollution removal, for example, and also optimize the system so that it, it works hydraulically. So we can do things either in isolation on a structure by structure basis, or we could optimize a complete um, suds train all within the source control module, which I know everybody has. Okay. Um, the next step is to take that suds train and integrate it into a model. And that model will be um, comprising of all the flow conveyance systems, um, as well as online storage and controls, online controls, offline controls, etc. So the intention is to optimize the attenuation that is already available within a model. Uh, and then I'll go on to the next step, and that's to restrict the discharge off site then to say 20 liters per second. Uh, and then I'll get the program to optimize online storage to alleviate any flooding created by adding in a flow restriction at the downstream end. So we've, we've managed to maximize the attenuation upstream, we've regulated the discharge off site, and we've restricted the discharge to the Greenfield um, condition. The whole intention of what we are about is to enhance your productivity, to provide the appropriate solutions that are technically correct, uh, but enable you to do this in the most productive way. So speed is of the essence. And um, I mean, talk to the guys, email us about the um, accelerator pack, the 2015 accelerator pack uh, that we have. Uh, the vast majority of people are working with the advanced and premium suites of the software. So I'm trying to step up a little bit with the webinars to satisfy those requirements and making sure that, that you're getting the most out of the software that you already have. So what I'll be doing today is working with the source control uh, module in, initially, and then including the simulation with APT and the CASDEP module. So these are the elements that will enable you to get the maximum benefit and the maximum speed um, throughout the design process. So let me go live with the software. And the first thing I'd like to do is take a look at this soakaway design. Now what I've done, I've, I've, I've taken the runoff from quite a large area here, as you can see, four hectares, you can do this for, for one house, 120 square meters or whatever. So scale is not an issue in, in my mind. Um, so what I'd like to do is just show you the results of what I've done. I've tested um, this soak away and we have some flooding. Um, how much flooding um, is uh, 84 cubic meters above the ground? Uh, the maximum depth of water within this structure is 1.584 meters. And just to orientate you, the structure is actually 1. Point, the invert level of the structure is 1.5 meters below the ground level. So we've got 84 millimeters of exceedance, um, and that's providing 84 cubic meters of flooding on the surface. How do we go about fixing this, and why did it flood in the first place? Well, may, maybe um, an engineer designed the soak away for a 10-year return period, but now the client is, is recommending that we design this for a 30-year return period. So obviously it won't work, so how do we fix it? What I can do is um, go to the edit drop-down, 
in source control for this particular structure. Take a look at the CASDEF controller and the INDRA level of the structure is at 100 above datum. The depth of the structure itself is one meter, so the maximum design depth is 101 meters above datum. So when I click on the CASDEF controller, you can see that you can set a maximum allowable water level within the structure, uh, and it's, it's coming up with the 101 target figure. So this is when the structure will be full, is 101. So if I say OK to that, having set up the requirements, and if I just close the results down, it's just a very simple animation of the ground level, half a meter of cover, a one meter deep structure, and its invert level is of 100. So I'm setting the max water level to 101. All I need to do now is click on the um, uh, drop down here in terms of analyzing, but I'm not going to hit green for go. I'm now going to get the program with CASDEF to analyze this. And if it's not a big enough structure, I'll hit save, make it bigger to ensure that the maximum depth of water within the structure is one meter. And that's what the program's just done. I've just run that live. So for these kind of uh, analyses, it takes a matter of a, a few seconds. Um, so the best it can do is 998 millimeters within the one meter deep structure. And interestingly, the critical event for this particular structure would be a three hour winter profile storm. I'm working with UK rainfall profiles uh, as I talk to you here now. So interesting um, and useful, but why don't we now um, set up a suds train. So let's define something. And I've, I've just gone to the cascade and define. And now I can load in that particular structure. So I'm going to add in my four hectare soak away onto the tablet. I'll add in two more structures and link them up into a little suds train. So I'll, I'll add, of course, car park. I can double click and it'll do the same thing for me and I can add a downstream uh, retention pond. Now, these other structures too have been designed for less than the 30 year return period. So the likelihood is they will be flooding. Um, what I'll do is just hit the green for go, and then we'll analyze the hydraulics of these three different structures. And we'll see what the results are coming back with. Now, the more structures we add, um, then the longer the run times will be. And I'm going to save this out as, as let's just say, sets train. So I'm just saving out this, this cascade file. I'm going to add to it as we go along. So the four hectare soak away, this was the one that I've just fixed. And we, we have the maximum depth of water at 998 mil. Everything's fine and OK. How about the porous car park? The porous car park, I'm looking at the red row of figures, by the way, folks. So the program has run all the different storm durations from 15 minutes all the way up to seven days, 10,080 minutes for the summer and the winter profile wet rainfall data that we have in the UK. Um, the red row is showing us the results for the porous car park. So we have flooding in the porous car park zone. The highlighted area uh, below is telling us the critical storm duration for the previous structure, the, um, the soak away. So you can see there's a, a difference in sensitivity to flooding from each of these structures already. And let's take a look at the pond. I'm going to just move that down. And actually, the pond is looking, it's saying OK, but the pond itself is one meter deep. I've set all the structures to be one meter deep, just to be consistent and to share this as a webinar, as a, as a demo. Uh, it's not flooding, uh, but the the, the maximum flow going through the outflow control is 20.3 liters per second. And I'd like to get that down to 20 liters per second to satisfy the authorities. Um, we have something flowing over an overflow, uh, a weir overflow. Um, so in total, we're actually discharging 
37 meters per second. Um, so we need to have that fixed as well. Now the beauty of this, if I go back to my cascade and define, I can now marry the structures up and define a suds train. Before I do that, I'd like to show you the benefit in terms of water quality for each of these elements. How will they perform and help us to maybe mitigate against diffuse pollution and things like this? So if I hit the pollution train analysis within the cascade of source control and say save, uh, this is based on Syria guidance at the bottom of the screen here you'll see that the pollutant removal percentages have been calculated in accordance with table 37 of Syria C609 and um, this was a SUDS manual before Syria C697 but the pollution um, aspect that's this chapter was not taken across into the new manual which is unfortunate hopefully with a, a new revision on manual C697 this will be incorporated again but out of interest, look at these four different individual structures. The soak away is based upon a cellular storage structure and the flows coming in, infiltrating out into the ground or discharging out through uh, a flow control device. And there is no benefit in terms of pollution removal. So what goes in is traveling out. Um, now Wednesday next week, um, Ludmilla and I uh, and Samer will be running uh, a webinar using XP um, storm XP swim and we can show you how the loadings can be analyzed the loadings of different pollutants in terms of water quality so um, if you haven't already booked on that then feel free to, to book for that have a look at the benefits of the porous car park and also the pond so we can see in terms of total suspended solids uh, we can reduce the pollutants by 60 to 95 percent with the porous car park 75 to 90 percent with the pond now, when I produce the sustainable drainage system treatment train, um, the outfall will be at the pond. So we can look at the benefits upstream added to the benefit of the pond and see what the overall treatment <coughs> um, capabilities are of the treatment train. And apart from the total suspended solids, we're looking at hydrocarbons for diffuse pollution, uh, phosphorus, nitrates, and heavy metals, etc. So let me go back to the cascade view and the define. And now we can link these structures up. And I'm just using this small model just to go through for demonstration purposes. You could work with 999 different structures in the one tablet if you so wish. We've made it up to 300 odd and lost the world to live. So uh, if anyone's done more than 300, do feel free to share and let me know. Um, I'm right clicking and taking the outflow from the soak away and discharging that into the pond, which is already um, undersized. I'm taking the uh, discharge from the car park, positive discharge. I've put vortex controls, hydro brakes in each of these structures. Um, so they're not just infiltrating into the ground, they're also having a positive discharge of up to 10 liters per second, uh, was, was the um, criteria that I set. And now, um, I could either analyze this again and then we're just going to see some flooding or I could hit on CASDEF, as I will, and then let, let the program analyze and upsize the, each of the structures that are undersized. And at the end of this e effort, I'll also look at the pollution removal. I'm just looking at the questions coming in closer as this is running. Just uh, bear with me. Yeah, Roy, that's, sorry, let me just hit save on this. Um, there's a question that's come in from, from Roy. Has CASDEF automatically increased the size of the soak away? Yes, it has um, in that first iteration. And now, hopefully, let's, let's check and see what's happening with the three different structures. It's now within the treatment train model, upsize the pond and upsize the, um, the porous car pack. And as I say, each of the structures have been set up so that the maximum water depth should be no greater than one meter within each. So the soakway is at the 998 millimeters, as was fixed earlier. The porous car park is the red row here, 995 millimeters depth of water. And notice the difference in the storm duration. It's a 60 minute storm duration. 
that is critical for the um, for the porous power pack. 180 minutes critical for the cellular storage structure. And there, let's take a look at the pond. <clears throat> um, the max water level is 996. Um, so we're, we're, we're meeting that 20 liters per second max discharge rate that I mentioned uh, earlier on to satisfy the authorities. And it's a 480 minute winter storm. So we have three different sensitivities, three different criticalities just within this, this simple model uh, already. Uh, there's nothing there going over the overflow because the programs upsize the pond to give us the correct volume to ensure that the overflow weir does not trip in. So the maximum amount of water being discharged positively is certainly no more than the 20 liters per second as, as required. Um, from memory, I think there's about 800 odd cubic meters within the original pond. So it's been upsized by about 50% by the looks of to 1,214, 1,215 cubic meters. So what do I need to do? Well, you just need to edit each of your structures. So I'm just going to the pond. Just edit your structure. And whilst, whilst you set something up, just make sure that you have set a maximum water level in each of your structure files. So I've, um, I've set the invert levels for each of these structures to the same and the water level to the same, just to try and uh, make life easier for the demonstration purposes. But that's the key thing. Just set the max water level in each of those structures within source control. And then the program could, if you take those structures, even if they're undersized, into the defined cascade view, you just hit the CC button and it will then auto design and set the right size structures across the network for you at a holistic level. Now, if we do that, I know that if this works holistically, when it comes to integrating these structures within the model, uh, where you have all the flow conveyance system, you're going to gain a little bit of extra benefit with attenuation within the existing flow conveyance system. So if it works here, it's guaranteed to work when you add those into the flow conveyance system, assuming we put the, the structures in the right places. And that's the next step I'd like to take you to now. I want to look at an integrated model or develop a flow conveyance system into a fully integrated model. If I go back to the cascade and define, I want to share with you the pollution removal based on the train rather than the individual structures. So I've hit that, click on save. And now there's just the one result for the outflow from the downstream pond based upon the benefit of the porous car park in effect upstream of it. So notice how the um, total suspended solids um, of uh, the pollution removal has increased now up to 77, at least 77% of the total suspended solids will be removed by this train up to 92% and then 43 to 69% of hydrocarbon. I'm really extremely frustrated with the, um, the draft national sustainable drainage systems standard that's come out saying, I want two levels of, um, of treatment. Um, you could potentially argue that two gully pots would provide you with two levels of treatment. You can see how much time this takes with industry standard software to analyze what it is you're designing for your developments. It will take you no time at all. You're working with the files that you're designing in the, in the software anyway. And we could come up with some targets as they do in Australia. Um, they will say that on any new development, you must treat at least 80% of total suspended solids, 40% of hydrocarbons, and then 40% of phosphates. So in this case, we may have to do a little bit more to satisfy the phosphorus and the total suspended solids. But it frustrates me that we don't have these clear targets, um, but there we are. Uh, onwards and upwards, let's take a look at the um, simulation mo model. Okay. Um, I'm now looking at a flow conveyance system that's flowing from the left-hand side of the screen, if you like, west across towards the eastern side. And I'm just going to run through three fairly straightforward steps, again using CASDAV, uh, but this time within simulation and an APT. 
the first step is to look at what we can do to maximize the benefit of the attenuation within this network. And what I'll do is I'll initially have CASDEF drop in the flow control down here on this manhole number six. Because I know that upstream of it, there's a 1200 diameter pipe, which has been put in there to act as a, an online attenuation tank. So we can take a look at the um, long section view. And I've just analyzed for, for one event right now. And if I run the analysis, you can see for this particular event, which happens to be the critical one for the model at the minute, um, we're not filling the attenuation tank here. So there's no online flow control. Um, if I go to the network, drop down and just show you there's nothing up my sleeves the, the, there's nothing in the way of online controls if i go to the network and show you the um, structures that there are no other structures that i've added into this model i'm going to get the program to add in flow controls and i'm going to get the program to add in some online structures to alleviate flooding so if i switch those off and i'll switch off the long section so step number one, uh, let's tell the program where we would like a flow control to be dropped and then ask it to max, set the flow control to the appropriate size to maximize the benefit of the attenuation upstream without the risk of flooding. How do we do that? Well, to start with step, step 1A, I'm going to click on the site drop down menu. I'm going to look at the CASDEF parameters. So there'll be many of you out there working with the software and you may be wondering, oh, I wonder what the CASDEF parameters uh, is all about. Well, what it'll do, it'll enable you to set up um, the minimum storm duration that you want to analyze, the maximum storm duration that you'd like to analyze up to seven days is what I'm feeling from 15 minutes to seven days. What's the minimum orifice diameter that we're allowed to choose? So again, talk to your water companies. Um, typically 100 millimeter would be the minimum orifice diameter that anyone would like to adopt. Anything smaller, there's a risk of um, long-term maintenance and blockage. And what's the freeboard factor? How close to the, to the surface are we going to allow the water to rise? Well, let's say one half of a meter, 500 millimeters below the cover levels. Um, the first step will be adding in um, an online control, but then the next step will be to add storage. And I'd just like to add the storage as an, an online pond uh, at a node or, or a manhole. And I'll say OK to that. The next step is to go to the particular network that I'm looking at. So this is a stormwater sewer, and I just want to maximize the attenuation within it. Now, there's a lot of work happening in the, the UK market right now in terms of AMP6. This is where we're, we're, we're doing a lot of work on the AMP6 projects. So we're going back and fixing problem areas that are already um, suffering from flooding. Have you put in CSOs and online storage, etc., etc. This is the kind of work that, that um, this, this lends itself to. So I'll go to the network drop down. And for this particular network, I will set up a CASDEF controller. And here are all the pipes and the manholes. What I'd like to do is for this manhole number six I just highlighted, I'd like to modify the control. There is no control right now. So in other words, modify the control, add a control at manhole number six to maximize the upstream attenuation. I'll, I'll come back to discuss these other um, options a little bit later. I'll say OK to that. And now I can run with the wizards. So the wizards come with the, with the CASDEF and the APT. And in the last webinar, I showed you the DrawNet CAD, and we were bringing in 3D ground models, et cetera, with the APT functionality. The APT, Advanced Productivity Tools, will provide you with that 3D ground information option, bringing in GIS data, but also running all these variety of wizards that you could now run. And what I'd like to do now is get CASDEF to run through for the 30-year return period and then drop in the flow control 
and maximize the attenuation upstream without creating flooding. So if I click on CASDEF and Summary Wizard, I'd like the program to run both the summer and the winter profile storms. This is going to take a couple of minutes to run, which will feel like a long time in terms of a webinar. I'd like to select all the storm durations up to seven days. And I'll go to find time step and hit finish. So the program will now go off and then drop in the flow control, check whether it's flooding or not upstream for 38 different simulations based on the 30 year return period uh, to mitigate against flooding. So it's running this simultaneously and then it'll add in a, an appropriate size flow control to maximize the attenuation, certainly within that tank sewer. And I'm, I'm just going to take a look at the questions whilst this runs. It's okay. probably going to take about a minute and a half to run. Peter, we have a lot of questions regarding how does CASDEF cement uh, structures? Okay. Is it based on the area? Can you...? Yeah, it, it, it is. So basically what I've done, I've, I've fixed the depth of the structure. So thanks for the questions, folks, and thanks, Ludi. Um, I've fixed the depth of the structure and I've now said, okay, each stretcher is one meter deep, doesn't have to be a meter deep, and the maximum water level within the stretcher must be one meter. So in other words, make the stretcher bigger in terms of surface area to make sure that the water is no more than the meter deep. So you so can fix the depth? You can, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, it, it can vary a little bit between stretchers because we can work with attenuation structures as well as infiltration structures uh, and some of the infiltration structures have slopes on their base so it'll adjust the width rather than the length and things like that okay um, that was a maybe a two minutes it took to run and I'm just going to save um, to see what's what's occurred and what the program has now done <clears throat> um, the discharge by the way I, I should have showed you the the results earlier on but the discharge was running at about 800 litres per second, a little bit over. The program has run 38 different simulations. I'm going to click on the critical and then scroll across. And at this minute in time, the majority of cases is the 15 minute winter profile 30 year storm that is critical. Um, with the exception of a couple of pipes in the middle of the network where the critical storm duration is now 30 minute storm duration. And if I look at the discharge, the discharge at the bottom end, worst case, is 777 litres per second. I'm going to restrict that down to 20 litres per second in a, in, in a second, just to give you an idea of the, the plan. Um, we have surcharging um, or just OK flow within the pipe. So in other words, we don't have any flooding. And let's see what CASDEF has done. So if I click on the results and have a look at the CASDEF audit trail, what the program's done, uh, let's run through, I'm looking here at the number of passes, so pass 1, 2, 13, 40. So it's run about 14 different passes with the 38 simulations and the answer is um, 268. So basically it's dropped in an orifice of diameter 268 millimeters at the downstream end of that tank sewer on manhole number six. If I look at the results and the CASDEF alterations that have been that have taken place, <clears throat> it's just highlighted um, pipe 1003 so the manhole upstream of it is manhole number six. And there are two little ticks there. The program's added the control and it's sized the control. So you can you can keep an audit trail of these, these things. So if I take a look now, uh, 30 minutes, 30 minutes storm duration was the critical for the pipe 1002 is the actual online tank sewer in effect. Um, so let's take a look at the 15 minute. These are all the simulations that the program has run. So the 30 minute, 30 year winter is the critical one for the pipe. 
if I look at the long section view. Um, now we can see with the animation that we're actually filling filling the pipe up. If I put the tracer on, here we are. The water levels filling right right up to ensure that we're no no closer than half a meter to within the surface, but utilizing the upstream attenuation without creating flooding. It's restricted, it's reduced the discharge as a consequence, so that's a, an added benefit. But I hope you can start to appreciate the, the, the power of what it is you can achieve. Um, let's take a look now at the next step. So going back to the plan view, you can see at the downstream end of this 1200 online tank sewer, there's a little, little pink dot. That's the orifice that the programs automatically dropped in. The orifice was 268. So if I click on the network drop down and look at the online controls, remember I, I looked earlier on and this is all blank. And here we are. Here's the orifice, 268 millimeter diameter. Okay. What I'm going to do now is manually add in a hydro break at the downstream end. So what I want to do is restrict the discharge before we, um, before we discharge off site down at um, manhole number 13 here, unlucky for some, I want to drag and drop an online control. The, the structure is about um, two and a half meters deep, the manhole from the cover level down to the invert levels, just under two and a half meters deep. Um, so I want to put it in a flow control <clears throat> to restrict the discharge from 777 down to 20 liters. Um, that will create flooding. But then I want the program to fix the flooding for me. So if you're working on these AMP schemes, this is one of those retrofit online storage possibilities that you could work with. So let me click on the little toolbox on the plan view. And let's take a look at the online controls. You can pick an orifice or a pump, whatever. Let, let me go for a hydro break. Left click, drag, drop onto the manhole. We move that to one side. See the orifice is already in place. Now we're working at the downstream end. Invert levels 96.037, cover level 98.5. So just under two, 2.5 meters deep. Let's set the design head for two meters. Design flow for um, 20, 20 liters per second. And I'll just choose the maximum opening size um, that will enable me to, to, to get this adopted. 153 is above the 100 millimeter minimum, typically that people are, are anxious about if you're less than 100, 200, sorry, 100 millimeter opening size is a risk of blockage. And I'll say okay to that. Now, having said okay, the programs now automatically run the, um, the summary results for the one storm in my simulation criteria, which was the original critical storm duration for the majority of the pipe network, uh, which did not have anything within it, the 50 minute, 30 year winter storm. And we've got flooding, not just at the downstream end, but further upstream in the middle of the site as well. So let's, let's take a view and say, okay, at the downstream end where we put the, the hydro break, let, let's get the program to drop in online storage just at that location and see if that's going to fix everything upstream as well. If it doesn't, then we could also, we could say to the program, add storage at each of the locations where the flooding is taking place. But I want to do a first iteration and if it works, it works and happy days. You can enjoy your lunch and, uh, and get back to work. So let me see um the situation here now we're looking at 420 yeah it's now on 500 cubic meters of flooding above the surface right now for this one storm duration and what i'm going to do is get the program to add in the um the appropriate amount of volume of storage under the ground at one location to satisfy the 38 different permutations so if i go to the um, network and we go to the CASDEF controller. We've modified the control. 
Now, at the downstream end, we're going to add storage. Now, do we want to put that storage in as a modification to the pipe size? Do you want to put in a lot of big pipes as an option? Or do you want to add storage, online storage, just a straight-sided um, tank or pond? I do. Um, and I don't want the level to go up to ground level. I don't want the water level to exceed the cover level, 98.5. Um, let me say 98.1. Uh, so we're like 400 millimeters below the ground level max. We say OK to that. And now if I run the wizard again, I can go to the wizards, cast F and summary wizard. Again, we're running both the sim summer and the winter profile storms, 30-year um, return period, all the storm durations, and then we can hit finish. Not quite sure how long it takes you to fix flooding problems, generally, guys. So any feedback on that, let us know. Um, I think this could really substantially help your productivity. There is a question. What happens if you have a size restriction for the pond? Uh -huh. Yeah, good point. So not just... enough land. Yeah, that's it. It's, it's all about practical issues. So the questions come in. Yeah, but what if I can't increase the size of the pond? Um, well, if you, if you can't increase the size of the pond, plan view and it's land take, I totally appreciate that. Um, then you're going to have to increase it in terms of depth. Or, I mean, ideally, what I what I want everyone to be thinking about and doing is adding in more either infiltration systems or attenuation systems right back at source. So the more of this we do at source control level, i.e. property level, and site control level, I don't know, adding in an infiltration trench or just a, a filter drain trench um, alongside the highways or a swale, whatever we can provide would all add to the benefits, the multiple benefits that we can gain from sustainable drainage systems. Okay, it's a bit more modeling involved, but we can do a lot of that holistically within source control in the cascade, identify a, you know, a suitable treatment train, uh, and then put that into the model. And I know, as I say, if it works in the cascade within source control, guarantee it's going to work inside the model because you've got the benefit, added benefit, of the flow conveyance systems and the, the structures within it. So good questions. Right. This is interesting for me. So now this, these are all the results of the 30-year return period. And remember, we had 15-minute and 30-minute earlier on. Now we've added in the vortex control, plus the program's now added in the online storage right at manhole 13. So look, look how the critical storm duration has now changed. And it's, it's now a 480-minute storm duration. Uh, moving over to the right-hand side, We've no flooding for the 30 year, that's that's key. So we have everything either okay or surcharging up in the in the manholes, which is great. Uh, and nothing more than 20 liters per second going out at the downstream end. So we're, we're, we're ticking all the boxes. How does this look? So let's remember these three different critical storm durations, 15 minute, 30 minute, 480 minute. So in my storm selector, if I go to the 15 minute, this is critical for the vast majority of the pipes within the system. So if I look on the long section view, there we are. So if I put the tracer on and run the analysis. That may well be critical for the pipes upstream. You see the max hydraulic gradient, gradient line here. So for those pipes upstream, that's critical. It's filled the tank sewer as well. But down at the, at the downstream end, where I dropped in the hydro brake and the online pond is now in place, not a problem for the pond for the 30, 15 minute. The next sensitivity was the 30 minute storm duration. So you just saw the hydraulic grade line, the red line, jump up a smidge on the tank sewer. Not quite so critical for the pipes. Water levels rising up within the pond at the downstream end. I'll take a look at this in the 3D view in a second, and we'll look at the modifications that CASF has carried out for us. And then the other critical 
sensitivity is the 480 minute 30 year storm duration. Now here's where the water level has risen up to within a half a meter or 100 mil of the ground level and the programs dropped in the pond to make sure that we don't have any flooding, not just there, but but, but upstream as, as, as well. And we can see that it's not an issue in terms of that online tank sewer. So very interesting to, to compare the sensitivities and criticalities um, based on that storm selector. What did the program do? Let's take a look at the results in terms of the audit trail now. Uh, it ran through 13 different passes and let's put in 800 odd cubic meters, uh, square meters rather, of um, storage on manhole number 13, 804 square meters. So that at least gives you a plan area. You know, have I lost a plot? Uh, all those kind of issues. This will be beneficial to give you tools to run different scenarios and then come up with appropriate, uh, meaningful choices. So if I close the audit trial down, take a look at the alterations. And there we are, down at manhole number 13, um, pipe, pipe 1007, is added a pond and it's sized the pond for us. And um, what does that look like? Uh, if I go to the network drop down and we look at the pond tank storage, it's literally just dropped in 803.7 square meters straight sided pond. So what we could do is we could take that um, volume that it's, that's put in there and then we can set this up and provide side slope pond or, or, or whatever. But, uh, there we are. How does that look in the three dimensional view? If I go to the plan view and let's start bringing it all together and zooming in a little bit for you. Okay, let me just move this around. So now for the critical event for the downstream online storage. So this is what's just been added in. I maybe have to speed this up a little bit. Otherwise it'll be like watching the paint dry. So there we are, we're getting um, up to within half a minute, 400 millimeters of the ground level there with the, um, with the pond. Uh, let's take a look at the 15 minute storm duration, which is critical for the upstream. I kind of cut the pipes off there. So we'll, we'll, we'll cut this a little bit briefer and show you the 30 minute. That shouldn't run too slowly. So we can see our attenuation is filling up nicely. And that's because of the orifice control that CASDEF dropped in for us, the 268 mil orifice control. So this is really going to be a, a big thing in terms of how do we maximize existing attenuation, how do we retrofit uh, various structures uh, within existing networks. This is the potential for us to go back and maximize the benefits of what is already there before we have to build any more expensive structures uh, in, in various locations. How big do those structures need to be? You can get the program to automatically design them for you. So I really hope that was of interest to you guys. We are going to go through and, and put together a series of um, question, uh, answers to the questions that, that have been raised. Um, this should have illustrated how rapid the redesign of an individual structure can be carried out. Remember the soakway in the very first example, how we can within source control produce and define a sustainable drainage treatment train. And we can optimize that train, both in terms of the hydraulics, but also in terms of water quality. And I really want people to be pushing through the multiple benefits um, whilst the legislation catches up with us all. Uh, and then how within the simulation, the integrated models, we can optimize attenuation within existing networks or even whilst you're designing you could optimize those networks to then reduce the volumes that we maybe have to find in terms of structures to make things more affordable and how we can auto design those online storage facilities. Plan of action now is to run the next webinar in four weeks time. And please feel free to send through your hot topics. Um, what, what are the challenges that you have 
with implementing sustainable drainage systems wherever you may be. If you can either drop that in the message or feedback in the survey monkey, I'll literally ask the question in the survey monkey uh, of you, and then we can cover those aspects in future webinars and keep this um, really dynamic user group uh, growing. Uh, we, we are seriously into the hundreds now, folks, and uh, we very much appreciate how oh, fantastic. Lulu is just telling me how many numbers there are. This is a record, by the way, so we're, we're kicking off 2015 with a really good, strong audience, and let, let's keep that, that rolling. Uh, so, Happy New Year, healthy, happy, and prosperous New Year's for everyone, from me and Ludi, and we look forward to your participation again on the 11th of February. Take care.